Okay, so here we have today's project. This was brought in by a longtime friend and annoyance. He knows who he is. He's probably watching. He likes to watch. Anyway, we have this thing here. Da -da, it's pretty cool. I hate to admit it, but he has a cool guitar. Look at this crap right here. This thing looks like it's 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 kind of neat because it looks like it's 100 years old, but I think, what was it, only a 07, I think. But look at that finish. That's some quality workmanship there, Gibson. Good job. Anyway, he needs some new pick-em-ups in this thing, and I think it needs a little bit of a fret. Oh, it's in tune. Fret level up here. Uh, yeah, we're gonna throw some. What are we putting in there? Some. We got some vintage EMGs, 81, 85s that are gonna go in this thing. So that's cool. So stay tuned. This should be fun. Hold on. Here we go. Pause. Okay, we get our EMGs ready to go. Our Ermagerd pickups. Ermagerds. Wow, these are old. Look at these things. No quick connects. We're going to have to extend some wires. This is not going to reach. All right, but that's fine. We can do that. I hate it when it's not long enough. And we have this. This one is good. All right, that's cool. This will be a chug-style guitar, that's for sure. All the Hetfield will be in this. Uh, we need to put a, he wants to put a black pick guard on it, which will probably look, that'll look pretty cool. Alright, let's get these strings off. Let's see, let's check the neck. Yeah, there's definitely a thing. Action's fairly, fairly high. Why that thing's stuck? Ooh. It gets pretty it gets pretty plinky if you bring the action down to where it should be. That's yeah, still really high. Yeah, it's even, even to that height, and that's way too high. So we have a fret level also. And as usual, I will uh, time lapse through the boring parts. These strings off of here. It's kind of cool how yellow this lacquer got on that logo. But it's pretty sad how, how it did not adhere to that, to that uh, fiberboard overlay that they use. Maybe it's fake. That'd be funny. It turned out to be a chipson. He had a chipson. I think it was kind of cool. Maybe we'll have that on at some point. They did a really good job on it. Need coffee. Oh, that's good. All right. Let's so we're gonna have to change out all the pots also because our Ermagerds uh, need 25K to work properly. I mean, 500Ks would work. When I worked at Rondo Music, they would uh, they would send most of their guitars with the MGs and just regular pots in them. They worked all right. They just didn't have very much of a range in the sweep, but nobody with the MGs runs them at half volume, so. I do. Yeah, good for you. Uh, oh, that's, uh, that's not the worst wiring job I've ever seen, but it ain't pretty. Will you poke it in there? Hmm. All right. So, yeah, we'll have to take that out. It'll need a stereo jack. 
that out of there. Come off. We have. Oh, yeah, we're good. Oh, I should have turned on my soldering iron. Why didn't I do that? Why didn't you guys remind me to turn on my soldering iron? Although I can just clip this crap, that doesn't really matter. We're not reusing any of this, actually. So it doesn't matter. I can just clip it. These are not the stock pots. Well, you know what? These. It might be. That does kind of look like Gibson ground wire. Huh, maybe it is. All right, well, I'll just desolder that. Fine. Keep it all together. Uh, what else do we need to do while that's heating up? Uh, let's see, are we doing anything else for this? I don't think so. No, that's good. Should do it. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Oh, they put so much solder on these things. Okay, now we can take off the uh, canabies. One knob that's tighter than the others, sir. Come on, there. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're gonna. That's right, that's also, we're gonna, we're gonna buff the stuff out of this thing, right? It's like grease. What did you do to this thing? What did you buff this with? Crisco? God. Is that DNA? Gross. So yeah, we'll just take it completely apart. screws over there most of those are gonna get chucked because they're all rusty okay that can stay there that's that can stay but where's I want to take it out for now right in front of you stupid so I'm gonna take the pick there completely off maybe I can just pull that all the way out let's see what we got we'll take it apart anyway Things gross. All the nastiness under those pots. Okay, and this, this we can. This over here, leave that out, that out. That's some, that's some great solder right there. Lots of cold solder joints all over this. But I guess it works, so. Okay, what else is that? Let go. Let go. Oh. Well, I'll just, just kind of equip that. Right. On that side. There. Okay. That's all out of the way. Some of the solder stuff there. That's all right. Wash them out there. 
And pick up. Yeah, scratch it right there. This hair's got plenty of scratches. All right. Might as well just is that hooked to something. Nope. Take it right out. There we go. This. These pull out. Nope. No, their, their pull-out game is strong or weak. Oh, yeah. oh that's all right. We'll leave them there. These we can get out, though. We do need more Bosch. Good. Let's clean up this disgusting guitar. Man, what kind of polish are you using? Here, get 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 yourself some ball polish. You paying attention? Ball polish for proper ball cleaning. You want ball polish, okay? It's the only good product they make, so just get some. Ew, man. All right, now that we've gotten that upper layer of filth off, we can go buff this thing out. Actually, we'll, we'll save that till after, just in case I put a giant gouge in it or something, and I can buff it out. So we'll do the fret levelage first. Now that guitar, now that this guitar is down to nakedness. You guys want to see the close up of the neck joint and all that stuff? Yeah. Huh? There it is. Routing's not too bad. Huh? What do you think? Yeah. All right, let's swing back out. There it is. Okay. Neck. Give it a little relief. Where's my wrench? There's my wrench. Oh, you've got an extra truss rod hole up here. You got three holes. <laughs> Let me get some loose tuners. Wow. You don't own a screwdriver? Tighten your tuners. Like his, uh, I think your your nuts in good shape, so that's that's a bonus at your age, especially. Um, let me get my block. Hold up, hold up. Get our fourteen. Normally, Gibson's normally says it's twelve. Often this era is more like fourteen, and that'll give you a little lower action anyway. But let's see where we land. Yeah, see, look at that. That's pretty even across it. In fact, it might even be a little, might even be a little flatter than 14. Maybe, is this a 16? That'd be weird. No. Yeah, it's just because they're uneven fretage up here. But yeah, this is closer to a 14 than a 12, even though they say they're 12s. Um, I need some new sandpaper. Hold on. Hold on, pause. Ready? There it is. Brand new. All right, let's uh, tell you what. I'm going to time lapse through this part. And then we'll go out to the big tool room and we'll do some buffing. And what else? What else we need to do this thing? And we'll do some wiring. Um, yeah, most of that will be time lapsed also. Lapsed words. And I think that's right. Yeah, that's it. We'll see if I have time for another video after. What else do we get going today? Oh, there's a ton of projects. Yeah. All right, anyway, so next up for the all the boring fretwork stuff. And thanks for watching. Do the subscribe -y thing. It's free. There. Pope, right there. Subscribe. Okay, time lapsed.
All right, ready? Powering on. Contact.
Thank mm-hmm. you.